speaker loves finding creative connections between the arts and the sciences, first studying plant science and theater, and then science communication through theater. Also, aren't fungi super cool? Please put your hands together for Sarah Bannister. <laughs> pretty diverse interests, and in high school I took everything from dance, drama, and music to math, biology, and chemistry. For my undergraduate degree, I chose to study plant science and theater studies in equal measure with a Bachelor of Arts and Sciences program, learning about acting one minute and internal plant structure the next. It was awesome. But the one subject I did not like was philosophy. I liked tangible things that I could embody or hold, and philosophy to me was a lot of asking, why? without really doing anything? Why do a thought experiment when you could do a real experiment or put on a play? So I avoided philosophy until my third year when I had to take a course on theater theory, which basically meant the philosophy of performance and theater's role in our lives throughout history. I was not excited. I wasn't quite hostile to the idea of philosophy, but I didn't get it and that was a pretty frustrating feeling. And then I was introduced to Arthur Schopenhauer, a 19th century German philosopher who believed that the tragedy of life arises from the nature of the will, the human drive to live and accomplish successive goals, but that the will is ultimately impossible to, tra to satisfy, trapping humans in a never-ending dance of achievement and dissatisfaction, the tragedy of life. <laughs> Understandably, Schopenhauer is called the philosopher of pessimism for his views that we are at the mercy of our unsatisfiable will but also as the artist philosopher. He believed that a really good tragic play can cause us to turn away even from the will to live, but it is just in this way we become conscious that then there still remains something left in us. Schopenhauer also connected the experience of watching tragic theater to the experience of the sublime in nature, where we turn away from the interest of the will in order to be purely perceptive. It's that feeling of being dwarfed by the scale of the cosmos, or amazed by the complexity and perfection of microscopic structures. Most of us are disconnected from the natural world through living in cities and suburbs where constant demands on our time and attention make it all too easy to live an entirely human-centric experience. But when we experience the sublime in nature, we may find ourselves feeling insignificant, and that feeling can help us reevaluate our stresses and put our problems into perspective. And this idea clicked with me on a deep level. <laughs> I felt like I finally understood that sense of astonished wonder and delight that excited me so much when learning new things, especially things about the natural world, in addition to finally understanding why people study philosophy. It was that, whoa, what, feeling. In other words, the feeling that embodies the interrobang. As I moved forward in my schooling and began a master's in fine arts degree for directing it for the stage, I decided this was the feeling I wanted to share with an audience. How could I capture that excitement of science, the joy of discovery, and make science accessible in order to reignite curiosity about the natural world? Through a lot of reading and interviews with people at the nexus of art science crossover projects, such as popular science communicators, playwrights, and researchers, I noticed there were three strategies mentioned over and over for successful science communication. Audience, fo audience focus, enjoyment, and narrative. Audience focus, or respecting your audience and their intelligence, is an integral ingredient for successful theater and science communication. Many people don't feel smart enough for science, hampered by fear and doubt from negative experiences during their schooling. So respect each person's knowledge and meet them where they're at. Make them feel welcome and valued, and you can help people realize they can engage with science in their everyday lives. Enjoyment can take many forms, from playing games to connecting with someone else to overcoming a challenge, but I focused on humor. Humor is an incredible tool for opening people up to what you're talking about, especially if the topic is uncomfortable or painful. Humor and enjoyment help people relax, sometimes so much so they even forget that they're learning. Nature is very important for helping people form connections between their own lives and scientific facts and ideas. It also humanizes science and scientists. Instead of thinking science is about being perfect, it helps people realize that science is mostly about failure and being resilient and creative enough to continue searching for answers. With these tools, I decided that my MFA's thesis production would be a devised, immersive performance. 
This meant that I would collaborate with actors, a designer, and an assistant director to create a humorous, science-inspired production to encourage people to take an interest in science by placing them on stage with the cast. And I figured we'd focus on plants, as that was my area of expertise. To introduce the cast to some ideas around forest ecology, I shared a podcast by NPR's Radio Lab called From Tree to Shining Tree. The podcast speaks about the connections between trees in a forest and the mycorrhizal fungi that facilitate those tree-to-tree -tree connections. And the cast was taken with the fungi. <laughs> mycorrhizal fungi live in and or around the roots of up to 80% of all land plants, providing the plants with minerals, water, and nutrients from the soil in exchange for 20 to 80% of all the sugary products of photosynthesis. And the network of fungal mycelia in the forest is so extensive, it connects plants to one another in a phenomenon described as the wood wide web. <laughs> Great. Uh, mixing stories and scientific perspectives, this podcast uses a lot of humor, evocative imagery, and appeals to emotion to communicate scientific content. One example that caused a ripple of excited terror in the cast is a description of how the fungi hunt tiny soil creatures called springtails, piercing them and sucking out their, uh, their insides while they remain alive. In our discussion of the podcast, the cast was animated and excited about what they had learned. As we continued our show creation process, they were eager to learn more about the fungi and explore how to embody that new knowledge for the show. Their enthusiasm and commitment made them an incredible team, inspiring me in every rehearsal to work as hard as they were on this show. We were all on a journey of discovery together. It was a journey to discover more about science, theatrical devising, collaboration, and what it means to put the audience on stage and involve them in the action. In the end, the show was exactly what I had hoped it would be, and audiences were very receptive to the subject matter and being a part of the world. Throughout this process, there were so many moments of, whoa, what? The cast reaction to the science, whoa. The way everyone worked together towards a common goal, whoa. The audience's investment and enjoyment, what? <laughs> everyone involved learned something new that excited them, and every time I look back on the process, I too go, whoa, what? Thank you. <laughs>